Hello friends and welcome to my new video in which I will tell you some amazing stories. But before we begin, please subscribe to my channel and hit the uh, like button on this video. Also, don't forget to write your thoughts about these stories in the comments. Let's get started. The first story is Hipster Dinosaur vs. Audi Annie. Although I find my experience to be quite humorous and intriguing, I can never be sure what other people will think. Found my own Karen a few weeks ago, but for the purposes of the narrative, I'm going to call her AA for Audi Annie. I adore alliterative names like Permit Patty or Corner Store Karen, Cop equal sign, irritated but ultimately cool cop, and me equal sign a hipster dinosaur. Me, of course. Just to give you a little background, even though I own a car, I prefer to ride my motorcycle because, in my opinion, it is more enjoyable to ride and uses less gas. I'm a 30-something guy who, to be honest, looks like a stereotypical hipster. However, funny enough, the same features that make me look like a hipster, long hair, long beard, glasses, also make me look like a motorcycle hoodlum when I'm in gear. Despite this, most people say I don't look intimidating at all if I'm not wearing a helmet or shades. In any case, I'm just stopping by the store to pick up a few things, and although the parking lot isn't particularly crowded, the front portion of the lot is. Since people can occasionally be creeps and tamper with your belongings if they believe they won't be seen. I've actually been startled by a stranger sitting on my bike. I really don't like to park my bike too far from the front. When I saw the silver Audi double parked near the front, maybe two, three spaces back, I was about to give up and park 12, 13 spaces back. The passenger side was actually just a foot past the line, which made it impossible for someone to park next to her, but maybe people would just think it was a SCH parking job rather than it being a SCH person. I pulled in beside the Audi, glad that I had found a spot so close to the store, even though there wasn't enough room for a car. Barely had I switched off the engine and removed my helmet when you-know-who materialized. It was a woman, probably in her late 20s or early 30s, with a sour expression on her face and a can-I-speak-to-your-supervisor haircut. Yes, I know that's what everyone says, and I usually roll my eyes when I see it, but after meeting her in person, it really does describe her perfectly. What the F do you think you're doing? You can't park there. AA speaks loudly and angrily. I turn to face her and ask, excuse me? While holding my helmet in my hands and wearing my sunglasses. You can't park your bike in those spaces. You're blocking my car and they aren't meant for you. Even though my bike was partially obstructing the passenger side, I've seen people get into their cars when other cars are parked much closer so I was surprised to see this woman yelling at me. Furthermore, this individual wasn't exactly a whale. I'm going to shop here. I'm allowed to park here. No, you're not. And you're blocking my car, exclaimed A. I'm not even parked that close to you, lady. You're the one who had crossed the line. Simply walk out and shut up if you're going to be leaving. You don't talk to me like that, you effing a-hole. With a crazy expression in her eyes, A.A. let out a real scream. You and your shred tea bike are the reason I can't get into my car. Before I call the police, get the F out of here. I rolled my eyes. Even though she couldn't see me through the glasses, maybe I would have if she had politely asked to move so she could get into her car, even though there was obviously plenty of room for her. To be honest, though, I was in no mood to put up with this crazy B-teach. I said F you to her. I swear I could see steam coming out of her ears, so I guess that was the wrong thing to say. In fact, AA stomps over my bike and tries to topple it. I thought she was going to get into her car, but boy was I mistaken. She was genuinely attempting to throw my bike to the ground, even though it was secured and not as simple to topple as it appeared. I scream, what the F do you think you're doing? And grab her wrists, shoving her off my bike right away. She then screamed for help, claiming that I had assaulted her. Imagine the scene in X-Men 2 when the mercenaries break into the mansion and that one mutant girl has the screaming superpower. Even though there weren't many people around, when AA screamed for help, someone did in fact call the police and inquire about her well-being. Suddenly though, AA was beaming at me. The guy who called the police, as I recall, appeared really uneasy and said he had to leave. A police officer didn't arrive for 10 minutes and I recall that the woman was now behind my bike in the parking lot trying to stop me from leaving. She had a red face, but she was grinning and told me I was going to get what I came for. She said quite literally that she hoped I got hit every day because that's what people like me deserved and that I would go to jail for attacking her. 
I tried to be calm even though I was a little worried because all I had done was remove her hands from my property. Eventually, the policeman showed up. I was genuinely worried by the man's expression, who was most likely in his late 30s. Have you ever heard the expression, it looks like someone took a sure tea in your oatmeal? This guy, though, appeared to have taken two enormous turds in his cream of wheat just before he had to come deal with us. AA ran up and began talking a mile a minute before the policeman could even introduce himself. She was literally having bad breath because of all the crap coming out of her mouth. She told the police that I was a gang member who rode a bike, that I was parked illegally, and that I threatened to beat her before punching her in the face. Recall that she had not even a single mark on her face from where I allegedly punched her and my bike was parked perfectly and legally. The police officer turns to face me and asks for my side of the story, appearing unconvinced. I tell him the truth about what actually transpired. I parked, she insisted that I move, and she attempted to knock over my bike, while yelling at me to stop lying and trying to insert her own ludicrous timeline into my account. At last, the officer glanced at AA. Ma'am, if you really want to claim he hit you, I'm sure the store has cameras. I would be happy to check, but as for parking, your car is the one who is illegally parked. When AA realized the policeman wasn't going to believe her story out of the blue and haul her off to jail, her eyes took on that crazy expression once more. You effing moron. This is not the place for him to be parked. Amazingly, she stopped discussing how I hit her right away. In fact, I am going to issue you a ticket because you decided you could scream in my face and call me a moron, the offended police officer stated with a lack of joy. And that's when AA lost it. Using all of her strength, she smacked the officer in the face and shoulder, partially missing, though it's unlikely she could have hit him. The impact happened right away. It reminded me of those nature documentaries where a snake just strikes out of nowhere. After the policeman grabs her, AA starts screaming again as she is handcuffed and soon he has her face first over the back of her own Audi. I've been standing there with my mouth open the entire time, trying not to do anything that would make me the object of this officer's wrath. He informs her that she is being arrested for assaulting an officer and that her Audi will be towed at her expense unless someone can come get it after she has calmed down. AA is screaming that this is a travesty of justice the entire time, that the cops shouldn't have been allowed to treat her in this way, and something that really got me thinking was that more people should be shooting these corrupt cops with N-words. She screams and kicks her feet some more before being pushed into the back of the police cruiser and starting to cry. It's an impressive sight. When the policeman asked if I wanted to file any charges, I answered truthfully, for what? Actually, she was just being a BB touch, and to be honest, I believe she had gotten herself into enough trouble already. Depending on whether she calms down, the police officer said they might try her for disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. I told him I would probably only be in the store for about 15 minutes, but he added that if she did have someone pick up her car, he would make sure a police officer was nearby in case she had any friends who might try to take it out on my bike. There is no closure for what happened to her priceless Audi because the car was still there when I left. That's my story. I'm not sure what happened to Audi Annie. But I never saw her again, though I do occasionally see a silver Audi around. Audi Ani turned out to be a real aggressor, trying not only to accuse you falsely, but also physically attacking the police officer. In addition, the police officer seemed to understand the situation and acted according to the rules, issuing a ticket to Audi Ani for her hostile actions and assaulting him. A positive element is the professionalism of the police officer, who considered the circumstances objectively and acted in accordance with the rules. It is important that you decided not to press for an arrest, realizing that Audi Ani has already caused enough problems for herself. Therefore, I hope that she is punished, otherwise it would be better if you press charges against her, so that next time she realizes that her actions will not go unpunished. I wish you further adventures on the road and the most interesting observations. But of course, without Audi Ani. The next story is HOA against my personal freedom. My personal freedom is one of the few things I cherish the most. That's precisely what I paid for when I purchased my home. A quaint ranch-style home on two acres tucked away from any homeowners association. There were no HOA regulations or nosy neighbors telling me what I could or couldn't do on my own land. That was my initial thought anyway. For weeks, I had been organizing a pool party, just some friends, family, delicious food, and a few cold beverages, 
nothing too fancy. It was going to be one of those idyllic summer afternoons when everyone laughed, relaxed, and forgot about the stress of the work week. My large backyard, complete with patio furniture, an in-ground pool, and an evening fire pit was perfect for it. At about noon, the guests began to arrive. Burgers sizzled on the grill, children splashed in the pool, and soft music played in the background. It was just the kind of leisurely day I had imagined. However, as soon as I flipped the burgers over, I heard something that made my stomach turn to stone. The sharp clang of a metal gate opening, followed by a sharp clearing of the throat. Turning around, I saw five people marching into my yard, led by a woman in her mid-fifties who was dressed in a khaki outfit that I could only describe as military style. Four people stood behind her, all with clipboards in hand, and identical looks of disapproval on their faces. Initially, I assumed they were lost, perhaps local officials or door-to-door -door salesmen. However, it was evident from their body language that they weren't there to converse as they got closer to the pool. The woman in charge stated, this party is in direct violation of our HOA bylaws, without even introducing herself. You will need to turn it off right away. I blinked in surprise. Pardon me? I answered, attempting to understand what she was saying. She pointed to the water with her clipboard and said, The rules say your pool party isn't allowed. Neighbors have repeatedly complained to us about the traffic, noise, and general disturbance. You must put an end to everything and ask everyone to depart. Her claim struck me as absurd as a truck. I chuckled, continuing to believe that there had been a miscommunication. I do not belong to your HOA. HOA land, this is not. It's not the right house for you. Her arms were crossed and her eyes narrowed. Here's where you're mistaken. This entire neighborhood, including your home, is governed by our HOA. I don't normally argue, but I was positive that my property wasn't a part of their priceless association. I had insured that when I purchased the house. I took out my phone, checked my email, and flipped to the real estate paperwork. As expected, it turned out to be true. No HOA governed my address. I presented the document to her. This expressly states that my property is not a part of your HOA. You are free to depart as you have no authority in this place. But rather than give in, she grinned. We recently increased our range. It might be a good idea to look at the updated map. I'll admit that for a brief moment, doubt entered my mind. Is it possible that they integrated my house into their HOA without telling me? But before I could reply, one of her mercenaries with a clipboard began taking photos of my guests and the pool. Someone else started recording license plate numbers. It was quickly getting worse. I yelled, you can't just come onto my property and take pictures. This is unclaimed territory. She looked at me icily. We'll be fining you if you continue to break the bylaws. We will be sending you a letter in the coming days. My guests were left stunned as she turned around and left my yard with her lackeys following closely behind. I was furious for the next two hours, but I wasn't going to let them spoil the celebration. Even though the day went according to plan, I couldn't stop thinking about what had just happened. They were gravely mistaken if they believed they could scare me. Next day, I went to see my attorney. He confirmed what I already knew, that the HOA had no authority whatsoever over my property, after I showed him the documents and gave him the rundown on what had happened. He did, however, make a point that I had not considered. If they were bothering me in this way, perhaps they were harassing other people as well. That inspired me with a thought. I looked into this. It turned out that not only had the HOA president and her officers crossed boundaries with me, but also with other homeowners, people who, like me, were not even members of their association. The shocking part is that they had been financing personal expenses like house renovations and vacations with money from the HOA. My luck was beyond belief. Equipped with this knowledge, I headed to the county. They were engaging in fraud in addition to encroaching on non-HOA properties. The ensuing inquiry was conducted in a brutally quick manner. The HOA was dissolved in a matter of weeks. Due to their embezzlement, the president and her officers received hefty fines and might go to jail. For my part, their little clipboard brigade was no longer a concern of mine. Nobody was going to ever restrict what I could do with my property again. It was as free as the day I bought it. The party by the pool? To celebrate, we had another party. It was even larger this time and nobody dared to crash it. The next story is when good deeds get mistaken for a red dot uniform. Background. Having been hired by a company that uses red letters for employee IDs, 
I, a male, had just finished work the day I received my name tag. I made the decision to visit the closest red dot in a red circle store near my house to peruse the women's underwear department because a friend of mine is very self-conscious about purchasing bras because she is under 5 feet tall and short and busty. Imagine a real-life Hana Uzaki from the manga anime Uzaki-chan wants to hang out. I shop at the Red Dot store because I want to support the latter, but she can't afford the perfect fit specialty store prices, so she settles for the passable fit retail prices. She also doesn't like it when her friends spend money on the former as gifts. I made the selfless decision to purchase a few bras for her from the previously mentioned Red Dot in a circle store. I didn't care about things like that because she's helped me through a lot, but some people might find it strange that a guy would buy something like that for someone who wasn't their wife or girlfriend. If she had asked for some toys, I would have gone without hesitation to an adult specialty store. Nevertheless, I start looking through the ones that should fit her fairly well after doing a little size conversion using the 2 inch by 1 cup size rule. I also untangle the bras from one another and return the ones that I knew wouldn't fit her fairly well. Though at the time I was unaware of it, I suppose I appeared to be a staff member setting up the women's area. That's when I heard it. The nasal vocal tones reminiscent of Fran Drescher that they are recognized for. Me equal sign op, Karen equal sign K, and the store manager equal sign SM will make up the cast. Although the exchange below isn't verbatim, it captures the general essence of what was said. Karen, I apologize. I turned to look at her, still clutching a couple of bras on hangers. OP, hold on, I'm sorry. I shift slightly to the side and turn to face Karen, assuming she was interested in the area I was in front of. Sure enough, she did resemble the stereotypical white middle-aged Karen. Karen, please assist me in finding random canned food brand. I just checked there and it was not there. The ladies and food sections were at different ends of the store, just like in most other red dot in a red circle stores I visited, which confused me. In addition, I noticed that many workers were out replenishing shelves before going to the women's area. That implied that Karen would have had to go through a number of co-workers before reaching me. K, are you really that dumb? Yes, that is how she actually said it. OP is still perplexed. Oh my god. K was clearly irritated when I said, Are you effing stupid? God, this is such bad customer service. It's no wonder the nation is collapsing. You millennials aren't willing to work hard enough to earn a living. I'll get your manager, so get me that random brand of canned food now. That's when I realized I was in an IDWHL situation. The woman was rude, but I chose not to let it bother me too much because I figured maybe she was having a rough day and would understand if I explained that it was my fault. OP, I apologize, ma'am, but I'm not employed here. K, obviously you do bulk P. You have a red name tag just like the other millennials who work here, and you're dressed the same as them. I was not at all dressed like a red dot working for a red circle store. Instead, they were wearing khaki pants and bright red polo shirts. I was dressed in black dress pants and a yellow polo shirt with stripes of green and purple. Indeed, the IDs were red. But mine had a rectangle design rather than the customary long oval shape of this chain, like debit cards do. OP, see ma'am, I'm not sure what. K, cuts me off and launches into an anti-millennial diatribe saying she's going to take my job. Before Karen could say anything more in her tirade, a woman in her late 20s or early 30s approached us while actually wearing the red dot uniform from a red circle store. I'm SM, the store manager at this location. Please excuse me. I heard the yelling because I was passing by. What appears to be the issue? K. Cue typical Karen behavior, where she accuses the other person of being the victim and demands to be fired, calling herself a rude employee who insulted a devoted customer for asking for assistance. SM looks at me, then maybe at herself to make sure she's not unaware of any changes to the dress code, then back at me, and finally turns to face Karen. SM. I apologize, ma'am, but I have never seen this individual in my life. He doesn't work here at all. No one in my store may be harassed by customers. Karen flushes and begins to stammer, but in an attempt to keep her composure, she gets an idea. Okay, then again, the man was still fiddling with the women's bras like a sick pervert. For that alone, he ought to be expelled from the store. SM looks up at me and asks, were you following her instructions? Calm spoken. OP. No. I wasn't. 
I was browsing bras for a friend of mine who was self-conscious. I had to separate a few of these because they were tangled together in order to get a better look. I wasn't acting pervertish by playing with them at all. SM. Yeah, I get it. That kind of friend I have as well. K. He's lying. He was just kidding around with them. I want him removed from the store immediately. SM. Ma'am, you can't bother other customers like that. I will have to request that you leave. K. No. It should be him who gets fired. Points to me, not me. SM. Ma'am, I'll have to call the police and have you escorted out if you don't leave. K. Okay. Karen dashes to the adjacent exit, dropping the bags she was carrying. She turns around just as she is about to enter the room and says, K. I'll file a corporate complaint against you two. A manager has no business hiring a sick pervert to begin with, much less covering for him. She eventually departs after that to go wherever Karen goes. The SM apologized for the inconvenience and offered to let me use her manager discount, but I declined because it wasn't her fault, got my friend new bras, and headed home. Edit! She isn't quite as stacked as the previously mentioned Hana Uzaki character. I just mentioned her name to give you a rough idea of what I mean. But she can't afford the specialty store, so she lives on the edge of a retail lady section and a specialty store. Your concern for her feelings and your desire to do a nice thing emphasizes your deep understanding and support of your friends. It's a shame Karen didn't realize this and caused unnecessary conflict. It's good that the store manager intervened in time to protect you from an unjust attack. Thanks for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe, like, comment. See you soon.